I mean, I'm sure we could bring out airport scanners. <laughs> um, you know, for me, I think um, some people ask me why I keep my phone in my car, and it's, it's a it's a bit of a lengthy story, so bear with me, uh, Commander. I don't want to get you too far off schedule. <laughs> but um, it, uh, it really, I have to back up. About four or five years ago, uh, I was in California driving for uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I just got the ride to drive his 88 car. And uh, we were running a race there, and I got in a really bad accident. And uh, the, the air lifted me off. And obviously my family wasn't there because the race was in California. My family was back in Michigan. And they had no idea, you know, what status I was in. Um, and quite frankly, neither did I. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they, they airlifted me off. <laughs> they airlifted me off to some hospital. And, and I don't know if you guys know this or not, but L.A. is a really big city. And, uh, and uh, she didn't have any of my stuff. You know, she just rushed to the hospital. So here I am still with nothing. And I think she let me borrow her phone, and I was eventually able to call my mom. But this was after hours. You know, the race had gone off the air. So I really felt bad for my mom, and I myself was in a very bad position. So, uh, you know, I, I tell you that story to, to fast forward to uh, this past year uh, at Road Atlanta. I got in another serious accident and, again, got airlifted off. And the difference was that I had my phone with me. And... Uh, I had my phone with me because testing, you know, it gets really boring, monotonous. You sit in a car for an hour while they make a change. So I go through the, the incident and so forth, and uh, they put me on a helicopter, all that same stuff. And uh, I have my phone with me. And so I just send a message to my mom like, hey, just want you to know you're going to read this in the news, but uh, I am think I'm okay, you know. And so that kind of, um, you know, put the fire out uh, before it really got started. And I think she really appreciated that. It put me at a lot more ease because when I got to the hospital and there was nobody there, I knew how far away they were, and I, you know, I could hit Google Maps and figure out where I was. Um, so from that moment on, uh, I decided I was going to keep my phone with me um, in the race car. Uh, so you know, I, I know that's probably not where you thought I was going with that story, but uh, <laughs> there was actually a practical purpose for having it with me, and um, you know, so I had a pocket put inside my car. Uh, to be able to keep it there. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I didn't put it in my car thinking we were going to have a red flag at Daytona for a guy hitting a jet dryer and causing an explosion. Uh, I, I didn't really have that much foresight, but, uh, you know, that, that was kind of how the story all played out. And, um, you know, uh, you just can't plan moments like that. They just happen. Final question in here. Go ahead, Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Can you address with the move to Ford, the Ford powerhouse, how powerful you think that will be? You got Roger Penske, sort of a lone wolf. You got Jack Roush, who currently is the leader of the Ford powerhouse. How do you see that interfacing? How powerful do you think it will be? Sure. Address that. <laughs> well, the easiest way to explain um, why I'm encouraged by the uh, decision, I think you just look no further than, again, a month ago, uh, or a month and a half ago when uh, when Ford made the announcement on their 13 car. Uh, I think that's obviously at least a month and a half, two months ahead of every other manufacturer. And I think that shows the, uh, the spirit uh, that they have for this sport and the commitment that they have for NASCAR. Um, and, and I want to be aligned with someone that wants to be the first one out of the gate, that wants to that shows me that they want it that bad. And um, I thought that was a key moment for me in uh, drinking the Kool-Aid, so to speak, uh, of why that's, uh, that's going to be the right way for our company to go. What about Roger and Jack? Yeah, I don't know much about how Roger and Jack get along. Um, I've never really asked them about that. I would imagine, you know, they're both big supporters of the uh, Detroit community. There's got to be some, you know, common ties there. Um, but I don't know how that works in action. So uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll see how that works. We'll kind of play that as it goes, but um, I'm pretty open-minded. <laughs>